Hey, this is Dan from SoCal Creature. In this episode, we're going to spend the weekend in San Diego and check out seven things to do there. Our first stop on the way into town was Annie's Canyon Trail in Solana Beach. The trail overlooks San Alijo Lagoon and Cardiff State Beach. The highlight of this trail is definitely the Slot Canyon hidden in the bluffs along the lagoon. The Slot Canyon was closed to the public for many years because it was a target for vandals, and the sandstone cliffs were covered with graffiti. In 2016, the Parks Department cleaned it up and made it an official trail and reopened it to the public. In some places, you can still see remnants of all the graffiti that used to be here. Oh, petroglyphs. What? This is not petroglyphs. This is graffiti. Same thing. Who that? Who that did Some sections of the canyon get pretty tight, and you're definitely going to be squeezing through sideways. The last section of the top is also pretty steep, but they installed these ladders that make it a cinch. Altogether, it was about a mile and a half hike and took less than an hour. It's also super close to the 5 freeway and easy to get to. Switch back some stairs. For our second stop, we went down to La Jolla and stopped in at Sunny Jim's Sea Cave. This gift shop on the cliffs above La Jolla Cove is the former residence of a mining engineer named Gustav Schultz. In 1902, Schultz had the idea of building a tunnel from his property to one of the sea caves below so that it could be accessed by land, and then he would charge admission as a way of funding his retirement. He hired two Chinese workers who were able to complete the tunnel in about 20 months using just basic hand tools. His plan was an instant success, and the tunnel remains a popular tourist attraction to this day. Initially, visitors only had a rope to help them down to the sea cave. But around 1910, they installed these stairs, which are still in use. Some spots are a little bit low, so you're going to have to watch your head. Can you touch your head? Oh, uh, yes. It's 144 steps from the gift shop to the sea cave. Roughly 10 flights of stairs. The cave got its name because from the inside looking out, the silhouette resembled Sunny Jim, who was a popular breakfast cereal mascot at the time. And now it's 144 steps back to the top. From there we took a walk along Coast Boulevard to check out La Jolla Cove and Point La Jolla. There's a lot of great scenery, but I want to talk about that odor. That odor that the locals not so lovingly refer to as Cove Stench. It seems that the efforts to protect local wildlife has been so successful that it's led to an abundance of fecal matter. And on warm sunny days like this, with no wind, and when it's been a while since the last rain, that stench is undeniable. Keep that in your know before you go file. Next, we went to Old Town San Diego. Created in 1769, Old Town San Diego is California's first Spanish settlement and is considered the birthplace of modern-day California. The State Historic Park still has many of the original buildings from the 1800s, like the Sealy Stable, which was the San Diego stop for the San Diego-Los Angeles stage line until the railroad put it out of business. The Old Town Market has over 100 shops, full of all kinds of authentic, one-of-a-kind merchandise that you don't need. It's enough to make your head spin. You are going to need to eat though, and Old Town has plenty of choices for restaurants. We stopped into Casa de Maria for lunch. They didn't have a great beer selection, but the chips and guacamole and the fish tacos were excellent. Baja tacos. It sucks, right? And then we head back to the gift shops to check out more things that we don't need. Our next two stops are ones that we found on Atlas Obscura, and they were right up the hill above Old Town, starting with Harper's Topiary Garden. This is a quick stop that you can take in in about five or 10 minutes, and we were able to park right across the street. It's the creation of Edna Harper, also known as Edna Scissorhands, and her husband, Alex. 
Apparently, they just didn't want their hedges to be boring, so they trimmed them into over 50 figurines inspired by their trips around the world. Next, we went to check out Spruce Street Suspension Bridge. This suspension footbridge was built in 1912, and it's 375 feet long and 70 foot high in the center. Oh my god, that little bridge is just adorable. Suspension bridge is strong. The Golden Gate Bridge is a suspension bridge. It's pretty archaic looking, and it'll test your faith in 1912 engineering. Is this really strong, Dad? I don't like this. It was originally built to give local residents access to what was then a new trolley line. The cables allow a lot of movement towards the center of the bridge, which has gotten it the nickname, the Wiggly Bridge. Yeah, you can really feel that thing sway. On a humorous side note, early in the pandemic, the city tried to make this a one-way bridge to promote social distancing. But how's that really gonna work? They eventually reconsidered and removed the sign. For our next stop, we headed over to Little Italy for dinner and dessert. San Diego's Little Italy is the biggest Little Italy in the United States, and one of its most iconic restaurants is Filippi's Pizza Grotto. This is their original location, and it's been open since 1950. That's my side salad. There's some lettuce down under the bottom there. Minestrone and my garlic bread, which I have not even touched yet. Guilty, guilty. Eggplant parmigiana and then lasagna and garlic bread. Guilty, guilty. We all enjoyed the food here, but I gotta say the portion sizes were ridiculous. Pasta chili. Pasta chili with marinara sauce. You think you're gonna finish that? No. No way. What do you got? Meat ravioli with meat sauce. You think you're gonna chance. finish that? I'm gonna try it, but no way. <laughs> no way. I'm gonna finish that, I think. I don't know. Eventually I did finish the dinner, thanks to all the help I got with the garlic bread. Then we set out for a walk along India Street and the Piazza de la Familia. Man, that car's open. Our last stop before heading back to our $50 parking space was Pop Pop's Paletta. They must have had a thousand flavors here. Thank you. Sprinkles and gummies. Okay, I want flour. And graham cracker. That looks perfect. Can I have a little bit of chocolate for the drizzle? Yeah, I think I chose wisely. <laughs> and last but not least, we checked in at historic Belmont Park. Belmont Park is an oceanfront amusement park that was built in 1925 to attract real estate development in the Mission Beach area. The earliest attractions here were an indoor swimming pool, which is today known as the Plunge, and a wooden roller coaster called the Giant Dipper. Both attractions are open and operational to this day, despite being almost 100 years old. There's about a dozen other rides in the park for all different age groups. Admission to the park is free and you just pay to play. You can buy individual tickets, ticket bundles, day passes, or season passes. Besides the rides, they have a bunch of other activities here to do, like miniature golf, laser tag, a laser maze, rock wall, sky ropes, midway games, and about a dozen quick bites in restaurants. All right, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. We hope you have enjoyed this evening's presentation. If you would like to learn more about these fantastic locations, simply click on this video's description and you will find numerous links to resources available on the World Wide Web.